Education is extremely important, and we place a great emphasis in the United States on our educations. But today on Walking with the Word, I want us to look into our homes and to see the book of Proverbs and gain some wisdom that we can apply to our homes when it comes to our biblical education. Proverbs 1.8 reads this way, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. This morning on Walking with the Word, join me as we look into your home. Within the pages of God's inspired Word, we learn the truth, which shows us the way that will lead us to heaven. The Church of Christ at East Hill invites you to study with us for the next 30 minutes a portion of the Word of God. Listen now to these encouraging words in song, and then have your Bibles ready for the lesson for today. One of the things that we'll always remember is the year 2020. We'll always look back and see that time where our world shut down. It's not just that America has shut down, it is that the world has shut down. We'll all remember the days in which a virus came through and killed so many loved ones. We'll remember all of those that were hospitalized and we'll also remember all of those who stood on the front lines to stand up and help those who were in a time of need. All of our medical professionals, our law enforcement and other officials who stand on the front lines to help us in our greatest time of need. We will always remember these days that we're living in. We'll always look back. And matter of fact, it's interesting to me to know there'll be a time when our children will explain to their children, I remember the day when everything stopped. But you know, in this great time of pandemic and panic, there are a lot of things that you and I can do to look into our homes to see what's really happening. I've been impressed, at least in the neighborhood that I live in, that I've seen families taking walks. I've seen families playing in the yard together, some of which I've never seen do so. 
Now that's not a negative comment to them because we all live busy lives and we all understand how it is to work, work, work and come home and be extremely tired. But we've seen families who've banded together. We've seen neighborhoods who have come together to help one another in a time of difficulty. This great season that we're in right now gives us a time to look into our homes and to see how we're living and to see if our homes line up with God's Word. I want you to see a few passages that will help us understand that our homes are very important. The first starts with fathers in Ephesians 6.4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. God has given through the headship of the Father to bring up His family in the Lord, including Himself, including His wife, but also including His children, so that He does not provoke them to turn away from the Lord inside of their wrath. But He's instructed them, God has taught fathers, to bring His family up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. That's something that we find in the New Testament in Ephesians 6.4, but it's not a new concept. It was said of Abraham something very similar in Genesis 18, 18 through 19. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great nation and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment and that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. You see, God knew who Abraham was and God expected Abraham to lead his family and to keep them inside of God's will. You see, you and I are not to be any different. We are supposed to ground ourselves inside of God's Word and the greatest time to do that is right now. Fathers should teach their children. Husbands and wives should study together. Bible discussions should happen because we live in a time that's evil. That's something that took place, by the way, in 2 Timothy 3, 13 through 15. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. It is inside of the home where a Bible foundation should be built. And may we all today take the time to look into our homes and to see if they are in accordance with God's Word. As we go through our study today, there's three areas I want to look at. Number one, I want to see that we must teach our families. Number two, I want us to know that everyone is included. And then number three, I want us to see that we must teach ourselves as we begin to look at God's Word and to make great application to our families together. When you go to the book of Proverbs, you'll find that the book of Proverbs gives a detailed instruction to children and their responsibility to their father and their mother. There's three passages I want you to see to see that we must teach our families. The first is Proverbs 4, 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. One of my fond memories of being a child is twofold. Number one, I can remember my father and my mother who made it an intent to my brother and I that we were going to be at the services of the Lord's church. We were always going to be there on Sunday morning. We were always going to be there on Sunday night. And we were always going to be there on Wednesday evening. Because that was something that my father decided that God's Word instilled. Number one, we all understand that worship should be attended. But we also know that Bible study through the authority of the eldership is something that we should attend. And my father, number one, wanted to make it known to his children that we would always do that. I also remember in my family as I was growing up how my father and mother would take the time to let me understand why I should do something, and why I should be concerned away from something. They truly took it to heart to give instruction inside of their family. I remember several times when things came up in my life and in my brother's life where they would sit us both down or maybe just as individuals and help us understand why we must follow God's Word and what God's Word said about a number of issues. We need to be spending time teaching our families and it starts as children with fathers and mothers who let them know about God's Word. We move now to Proverbs 5-7 that reads this way, Hear me now therefore, O ye children, 
and depart not from the words of my mouth. As parents, we should make it a necessity that any time we sit down with our children to talk about something that's important, to find a way to bring it back to God's Word. I would suggest to you that this man here in Proverbs 5-7, this father and this mother, were a Bible-centered or a God-centered home. I know that in the times of Proverbs 5-7, the Bible as we know it was not compiled. But you and I are blessed to have the Old Testament and the New Testament to see God to see people who reacted to God and to see that we can react to God in a way that is pleasing to Him. Not because He's lording over us in some manner. Not because He's demanding that we live this way just because He wants to. But we need to know that God expects of us a certain degree of living. And that that living is to protect us from the problems and the worries of the world. And thus this Father says, Hear me now therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. As a father, I hope that my words are always becoming of Christ. As a father, I hope my words always become in my decisions as Scripture would have them to be. But I understand something as you do, sometimes even as fathers and mothers, we don't have the proper words. Sometimes we don't use the proper words and sometimes we use angry words. And may we teach our families in those moments to be better and to live more for God. You see, as we teach our families, the book of Proverbs tells us that we must hearken unto the instruction. Listen to Proverbs 8.32. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. A father and mother who love their family will see the detailed instruction inside of God's Word and give that to their children and show them that they have a responsibility to fall in line inside of their families. You know, we need to understand that parents, as parents, our timing is very critical with our children and with our educations. We often inside of the United States have pushed college educations because we wanted a better future for our children. Well, may we push more and more a Bible education that will help our children live all throughout eternity. You see, Ephesians 5 verse 15 and 16 has some information that we need to know about this. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. You and I both know that evil exists. You and I know that from the beginning of time, evil has walked upon the face of this earth. But you and I do not have to walk in the ways of evil. We don't have to walk, Ephesians 5, 15, in the way of the foolish. But we can walk in the way of the wise because we can redeem the time, verse 16, because the days are evil. That should tell you and I that what we do in our Bible educations should be very important. Now I want to say something that may come as a surprise to many folks. But what your children know about the Bible should come from your home before it comes to them in the church. I love educational wings. And recently I walked down our education wing here at East Hill and it was empty. It was dark. It was silent. That's not how that wing should be. That wing should be full of life. That wing should be full of light. And that wing should be full of laughter and education. But I need to understand as a father and mothers need to understand as mothers that it is our responsibility to bring our children up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. May we take the time at home because we understand the days are evil to teach our children about right and wrong, to teach our children about worship and about the church, to teach our children about things they need to know. Our family should be the number one individuals of which we teach. And thus there's a passage I want us to see that hopefully will go through our lives. And I want you to know there are a lot of different thoughts about this passage, but I believe there's a main emphasis that we can all agree upon. It's Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We all understand. I do, as I have two children, and you do, as you have children, that our children need to be instructed. They need to be shown what is right behavior and what is inappropriate behavior. They need to be shown what is right speech and what is inappropriate speech. They need to be shown what is right in their greetings and what is wrong in their greetings. They need to know how to live. They need to know how to think. They need to know everything about this life because it's new to them. One of the greatest things, however, that we can teach our children is about heaven, is about this life. 
Because if we're going to teach our children about heaven, we're going to teach them about how they can live in this life. And thus Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Now, there are two different schools of thought about this passage. Some say it talks about how you should train him to live and, and give him a livelihood so that he can support himself and, and support a family. And I think that's a good application here, but I don't think it's the main application. I believe Proverbs 22, 6 talks about how we should train up our children in how they can go to heaven. And thus, when they are old, which by the way signifies to you and I, when the parents are no longer there, that's a very hard thought for me. My parents, thankfully, are still alive. My wife's parents are still alive, and, and our children get to experience all four grandparents, and we love when they get to spend time with them. But I know that there's coming a time when they will not be here. But I also understand that there's coming a time when I will not be here, and my son will not have me. My son will not have his mother. And thus, when I'm living in this life, I've got to do everything I can to show my sons that they can go to heaven. So that when I'm not here, he will still remember what he must do in this life to be appropriate to God. Thus, Proverbs 22, 6 ends this way. He will not depart from it. I believe if you and I will instill in our children a godly life, they'll always remember it. Now, Proverbs 22, 6 does not say they'll always live in that way. But you and I need to understand that as long as we are alive, there is still hope that we will come back to God. And thus we need to do everything that we can to show our children what truly is important in this life. Thus when you go to passages like Exodus chapter 12, 26 and 27, you see a great question that we need to be answering more and more in the day and age we live in. It shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service that ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshipped. There's coming a day in Exodus where the children were going to come by and say, what does this mean? I think we need to be more and more concerned about our children when they ask us questions. You see, parents... Our timing is very critical with our children and their educations. What are you teaching your children about God today? You see, when we look into our home, we need to know that we're teaching our families about how to go to heaven and about how to be responsible before God. But number two, when we're looking into our home, we need to know that everyone is included. The reality is true that children are not the only ones who need a study of God's Word. Every family member needs to be concerned about God's Word because everyone is included. It's said of husbands and wives this in 1 Peter 3, 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Ladies and gentlemen, husbands and wives should be concerned about heaven together. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. I believe there's two applications here of the word knowledge. Number one, we should be concerned about this physical life with our spouses. Husbands and wives need to be concerned about what is happening in both lives and take care of each other in that way. We need to be concerned about our emotional needs. We need to be concerned about our physical needs. We need to be concerned about all of the needs of this life. And we should dwell one with another in the knowledge of the things of this physical life. But not only that, I believe the main emphasis in 1 Peter 3, 7 is that we as husbands and wives should dwell together according to knowledge. What's the greatest knowledge out there? Well, if you ask that question throughout our world, you'll get a variety of different answers. I believe we can know that the greatest knowledge out there is God's Word. And we need to look more and more as husbands and wives into God's Word. We need to understand that we're prepared for this life because 2 Peter 2.10 tells us we've got to be ready. It reads this way, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. We need to understand that we can go to heaven and that everyone is included in that conversation and we can live as we need to live. We can do what we need to do because we can 
go to heaven. And we don't have to fall. We don't have to fail in this life. You know, we need to understand that we live together as husbands and wives in God's Word so that we both go to heaven, that we both are prepared. And by the way, one of my favorite ways to look at husbands and wives is to look at Acts 18, 26. There was a man who had came, Apollos, and he was speaking in the synagogues and, and he spoke boldly. And Aquila and Priscilla had gathered together to listen to them and they heard what he said and they realized it's not in accordance with God's Word. Read with me Acts 18, 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. I want to ask you a question about Acts 18, 26. How did Aquila and Priscilla know what was right and what was incorrect? Well, they knew God's Word together. And thus, as a team, they pull aside Apollos and they show him the way of God more perfectly. The only way they could do that together is that they know God's Word together. You see, children are not the only ones in a family who need to study God's Word. And by the way, families are not the only ones who need to, to study God's Word. You look at 1 Timothy 3, 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the offer of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Elders need to study. You look at 1 Timothy 3.13. For they that use the office of a deacon well purchase with themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Deacons need to study. And a passage written to a preacher, 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Preachers need to study. Every person in this life needs to study. You see, families are not the only ones who need to study the Word of God. So far today, we've looked into our homes and we've seen that we need to teach our families. We've seen that everyone is included and we see that we need, in number three, to teach ourselves. We need to be individuals who are concerned about eternity. We need to be concerned about the way we live, what we're doing and what we're not doing. There are three passages that I want us to see that will give us great consideration to our individual lives in teaching ourselves. The first is Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, I understand that there are a lot of things that you love. And I know that there are a lot of things that I love. There are a lot of things that I like to do, and there are a lot of things that you like to do. There are some things that I know a lot about, and there are a lot of things that you know a lot about. But I want to ask you one pointed question. Of the things of this world, are they more important than heaven? Are they more important than the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33? I, I love the illustration of this. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. How many things in our individual lives get in the way of God? How many things take the place of God? How many things take the place of God in our minds? How many things become something we're interested in the realm of education before we're concerned about God? I know that all of us want to be good at our careers. All of us want to be good in our families. All of us want to have nice things. But you and I understand there's coming a day when our lives will be over. Whether the Lord comes for that or whether we die of natural causes or we die of things and elements of this world. Are we really seeking the kingdom of God? May I suggest to you as we teach ourselves, we've got to teach ourselves to put God's first. And he tells us here in Matthew 6, that all of these things shall be added unto us. God has given us a way to know and to understand. I love Paul's statement in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ crucified. There is nothing more important than God and His Word and how we react to God's Word in our lives. And thus Paul wrote to Timothy something that I think we need to hear and something I think we need to apply to ourselves in 2 Timothy 4, 2-3. Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. We need to make sure that we don't have itching ears. 
And we need to make sure that we are concerned about eternity as individuals so that we know what we must do in this life. So far as we've looked into our home today, we've looked at three things. We've talked about teaching our families. We've noticed how everyone is included. And we've talked about teaching ourselves and how we must be concerned about the place that's called heaven. I want to suggest to you a few things that you can do because you and I are living in different times. We're not going to a physical worship. Most of us are doing it online. We're not going to a Bible class. Most of us are doing it online. But may I suggest to you this Sunday, when it comes to that online worship service, that you take time to talk to your children. Talk to them about why you sing in worship and why you pray in worship. Talk to them about why you partake of the Lord's Supper in worship and why it's important to give back to God. And talk to them of why it's so important to look at God's Word when it comes to worship. When it comes to looking into your home, will you take the time to make God's Word and make your family a priority so that you instruct them as fathers and mothers in the way that they must go in this life? I'm so glad this morning that you studied with me this portion of God's Word. But before we conclude, there's one more thing I want us to discuss. I want us to talk about salvation. And I want us to look at some Bible passages just in reference. You can look them up and see what God's Word has to say about it. When it comes to salvation, you've got to hear God's Word. John 8, 32 and Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17 is a fantastic foundational passage. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We say it all the time on this program, but don't listen to me. You go to God's Word, you open it up, and you see what God's Word has to say about salvation. You've got to hear His Word. Number two, you've got to believe His Word, Acts 8.37 and Hebrews 11.6. You and I need to understand without faith it's impossible to please God. We've got to believe in God. We've got to believe what God has said. Because if we're not going to believe what God has said, we'll fall for anything because we're standing for nothing. You've got to hear God's Word. You've got to believe God's Word and you must repent. Acts 2.38 and 2 Peter 3.9 talks about the idea of repentance. You've got to confess, Matthew 10.32 and 33 and Romans 10.9 and 10. And you've got to be baptized, Acts 22.16 and 1 Peter 3.21. And if you'll do those things, you'll obey God's Word and you will find that you can be a Christian. The only way to know that we can go to heaven is to look to God's Word and see the salvation that's found in the Word of God. He still wants to make you a promise, wants to make you a commitment to everything that we're doing and to all that we will do here at this place. We want you to look at things like salvation and see that God's Word is being upheld. We want you to know that it is our responsibility and yours to be accountable to God's Word. That's why when you look at Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can know that we can all think the same things when it comes to God. We can all think the same things when it comes to the church. And we can all think the same things when it comes to salvation. Because God's Word truly matters. And when we look to God's Word, we see the beauty that's found in the message of salvation. That's why East Hill is proud to say this morning that if you'd like to study the Bible, we want to study the Bible with you. We want to open up the book, the chapter, and the verse and see what God's Word has to say. And thus, if you'd like to study, you can give us a phone call at 931-363-2777. And just like the plan of salvation, we will open up God's Word and find where God's Word tells us we must look and what we can do. It's wonderful to look at God's Word and may we always depend on God's Word for the truth about salvation. I'm so glad today that you've taken the time to invite me into your home as we've looked at our homes together as we've studied God's Word. May we take this time as we're living in different times to put God's Word first and to look into our homes to make them biblical. Thank you for joining us today for our study. If you have questions or comments, feel free to contact us at Post Office Box 329, Pulaski, Tennessee, 38478, or call 363-2777. We hope you will be with us again next Sunday at this same time. 
and we would be honored to have you in Bible classes at the East Hill Church beginning this morning at 9.30. Worship will follow at 10.30. We hope to see you then.